Eight former African heads of state, ministers of energy, energy industry leaders will be meeting to develop a 21st century energy agenda for Africa at the African Presidential Roundtable in Johannesburg. Joining us now is former U.S. Ambassador Charles Stitt, professor of international relations at Boston University and an expert on political and economic development of sub-Saharan Africa. Very warm welcome to you. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, yeah, I just want to start with why you chose this particular group of people, particularly looking at the former heads of state in African countries. Well, when you talk about the continent achieving energy security, it's a political agenda, it's a policy agenda, uh, and it requires people. And what better group to try to, to get you focused on all three, uh, the full side, uh, than former uh, uh, heads of state who understand the problems, who have relationships that can be uh, explored and developed to mobilize institutions and people uh, to this agenda of energy security. I want to talk about the former heads of state. How much clout do they have in the countries that they come from? Particularly looking at, in some cases, when it comes to change of government, you do sure. sometimes have tensions between the, the, the people that take over from these former heads of state. Well, you know, we see their role as being tr transnational. It's, it's not just the influence or lack of influence they have in their own countries. I mean, they have convening power. I mean, they're people who've literally come from around the world because they are co-conveners with us in this enterprise. Uh, so they've got that, that kind of power. They, they also uh, uh, they still have an audience. Uh, you know, one of the key agendas for us uh, the, on the people side is that we've quantified that over the next 50 years, if Africa is going to attain energy security, it will need 40,000 C1 technicians, 30,000 C2 technicians, 17,000 engineers, and 7,000 research scientists. Uh, we see th these former leaders uh, playing a vital role in helping us to mobilize and galvanize young people uh, to start to look at the sciences uh, and technical fields as uh, uh, professional goals over against uh, something else. But we probably won't get to the point where we get some kid to figure it's cool, it's cool to be uh, uh, a scientist as it is to be a mm -hmm. DJ, but we can, we can have an impact. Okay, well, so I want to talk a little bit about all the discussions that have been taking place around energy. I mean, it's a global concern, and here on the African continent, it has been taken quite seriously. So many discussions are taking place. How much is this going to play into the central discussion that is happening with governments that are in power right now? Uh, well, it'll, it'll be an effort to, to, to provide a, a, another voice uh, for governments to hear, but also for folks in the private sector as well. Uh, it will take... Uh, tens of billions of dollars annually uh, in uh, investing in, in power generation, in transmission, uh, if Africa is going to uh, attain uh, energy security. I mean, 25 percent of, of, of Africans in sub-Saharan Africa have access to electricity. Uh, 26 percent of the oil uh, uh, pumped on the continent, remains on the continent. So there's a lot of, of, of work to, to be done. And uh, again, there, there's a, a, you know, po politicians that need to be mobilized, people that need to be mobilized, and policies that need to be coordinated. Uh, if Africa is going to attain energy One security. One of the things that you were saying is what, when it comes to this issue, it, it needs to come from, you know, it needs to not just be happening in terms of where the leaders are, but also grassroots yes. level. How do you plan to go about that? Well, as a part of the group that is uh, meeting, uh, in addition to public, uh, private sector leaders and, and the political people, are folks from the universities. We've got people from the University of Ghana, the University of Dar es Salaam, uh, the meeting is taking place at the University of Vatisran. Uh, we've got Morehouse College from the United States, Boston University, of course, uh, Elizabeth City State uh, University as well. Because uh, you, you need uh, the institutions like that involved, both in terms of research as well as developing the human resources and capacity uh, to staff 
the, the, the infrastructure that you need for energy security. Let's talk about investment. What are you looking at in terms of who would you approach to be able, with, with all the things that you're talking about, you're talking about big money here, who would you be looking at? Well, you're talking about the obviously the traditional multilateral sources like the, the, the World Bank, uh, the USAID, DFID, uh, you know, uh, do stuff at the bilateral level uh, uh, around this sort of thing. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, some of these mega projects that uh, uh, will generate electricity are going to have to be funded in the, the, in the private markets. Uh, and, and to do that, they've got to be packaged appropriately. Uh, and uh, I think Ernst & Young did a, uh, uh, a presentation a month ago uh, that indicated that uh, the 27% more in terms of foreign direct investment came into the continent last year over against the year before. So there's an appetite out there. Uh, it's just important that, that projects be packaged properly. When it comes to, to Africa, so many countries, and it's very, very diverse. So South Africa is very different to Zambia, it's very different to Nigeria, it's very different to Egypt. So you've got so many different um, things that are happening, so many different agendas that are happening on the continent. Is there a common strategy when it comes well, to it, energy? Th th there is going to have to be a common strategy, to, uh, at, at least at a regional level. Uh, and I think probably the more likely partners uh, for, for massive projects will be uh, countries that share similar political regimes, that is, their democracies, they have similar uh, economic structures, that is, they're organized along free market uh, lines. Uh, uh, so, so you, you know, there, there's going to be a need for some cooperation. The good news is, is that some of that is happening in some interesting ways and in other areas. In 1994, for example, South Africa invested about 4 billion rand in other uh, African economies. Uh, last year, that was up to 160 billion rand. So, you know, folks get it that there are opportunities across borders and that there are things that have to happen uh, across borders and that the ultimate future of the continent rest in that kind of uh, uh, cross-national cooperation. Very quickly, Professor, I have to ask you, what do you foresee being your greatest challenge? Uh, I think the greatest challenge coming out of this at, at the end of the day will be, will be twofold. One, it will be getting folks to think about uh, regional approaches to dealing with these energy challenges, because uh, folks are kind of used to operating in their own silo. The second big challenge, and, and this is why I appreciate the opportunity to engage you guys, is that we've got to engage this next generation of young people in Africa, uh, because you can't have energy security if you don't have the scientists, if you don't have the engineers, and if you don't have the technicians. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.